Atmos mixing is here with Studio One 6.5 and the good news is you can start testing it today with just an ordinary audio interface and a bog standard pair of stereo headphones which I'm sure you already have. The setup is quick and easy so let's dive in and find out how. So I'm going to be showing you how to take an existing stereo project in Studio One and set it up for Atmos mixing. So I do recommend that you save a new copy because we're going to be making quite a few changes. Now, the first thing we need to make sure of is that our project is set with a sample rate of 48 kilohertz. And if we look at the bottom of the screen here, you can see that mine is indeed set to 48 kilohertz. Just click on that because that's going to open up the song setup window, which we're going to be using quite a bit here. Now, if you need to change your sample rate, you can do that here. Just make sure both of the general tabs are selected and then you can set your sample rate here. Now, I do believe that you can also mix in Atmos using 96 six kilohertz but for the purposes of this tutorial let's keep it simple and do it at 48. Now with this window still open I want you to go ahead and click on the options button at the bottom here. The reason we're doing this is because we want to make sure that we have our buffer size set to 512. Now in order to do that you need to go over to the audio setup tab here and then on this tab down here just make sure you've got audio device selected and you can see that my buffer or device block size is set to 512 samples. Now you do need to make sure it's set to 512. You can do that in a couple of different ways depending on your audio interface. Some will allow uh, a selection box here and you can just change it directly here. But in all cases, if you don't have that option available, you can go ahead and click on this control panel button over here. Now when you click on that, it's gonna open up a window um, for for your device driver. So it probably will look quite different to the one that's opened up for me. This is for my audio device. Now, you're just looking for a setting on yours, which is gonna be something like buffer size or block size, and make sure it's set to 512. Now with that done, and I'll just close that window, we need to make sure we, now we click on the song setup button at the bottom here again. And the next thing we're gonna do, I just wanna make sure of something here, is go over to audio input output setup. So click on that, and then make sure you're on the output puts tab here. Now you can see with mine, I've got a really basic setup. I've just got my main stereo output and you can see the left and right channel selected over there. And I would urge you for this tutorial just to set up a basic main output like that. The reason I mention this is some of you for some of your projects may have things like Q mixes set up or effect sends, etc. And I think it's best at the moment just to keep it simple and have a basic output or main output in stereo there, okay? So once you've checked on that, let's go back to the general tab at the top here and then make sure you're also uh, on the spatial audio tab here. So I'll click on that. And then for the mode, I'm gonna select Dolby Atmos like so. Then for the bed format, I'm gonna leave it on 7.1.2. And for the output format, I'm going to select 7.1.4, okay? Now at this point, I'm gonna click the OK button and we're gonna see quite a few changes happen in Studio One. So I'll go ahead and do that. It closes that window, just wait for a moment or two. And then you'll see this window pop up first of all, Dolby Atmos Renderer. We'll be talking about that in a moment. But first of all, we need to go back into song setup again. You can do that by pressing control period or control full stop or command period, command full stop if you're on the Mac. Yep, so control period for me. And then I'm going to go back again to that audio input output setup. Okay, go over there. It's set to outputs. Now this may look a little bit different to you depending on your audio interface. You can see here for me what it's done. It's got that main channel and it's created all of the outputs required for Atmos mixing for my main output. Now if you happen to be using, for example, a much smaller uh, audio interface with just two outputs, it's going to show those left and right channels and it'll have something like a plus 10 or whatever 
whatever number there. It doesn't matter for the purposes of mixing uh, or testing this out with headphones, okay? What we're gonna do here is actually switch that off. But first of all, you, I also want you to notice there's a headphone output which has been created here. That's what we're gonna be using. And I want you to assign its left and right channels, which are selected here, to the main left and right outputs you have on your audio interface. So for me, that's the first two here. I'm gonna click on that. Now you'll see that at the moment this is turned red. That means there's just a conflict happening here. What I'm gonna do is just click on this left or right channel here, and it makes all of those Atmos channels for the main output disappear, okay? Which is exactly what we need for this tutorial. Now, if you happen to have an Atmos setup, you'll wanna leave all of that switched on and you'll wanna assign your headphone output to whatever channels uh, you wanna assign it to. But for this simple tutorial, we'll have it set up like this and then we'll go ahead and click on OK. So that's all of the main setup done. Now it's time to get your headphones out and give this a test run now. Of course, you're not going to get the full Atmos experience with stereo headphones, but you may be surprised at how much it delivers of the experience uh, when you try this out. So let's dive in and find out about these new features. There are two panning methods available in Atmos. We have surround panning and we have spatial object panning. Now, after we set up Atmos in Studio One, by default, each channel is set to surround panning. So that's what we're gonna take a look at first. Now, as we saw earlier, once we'd done our basic setup, this window appeared, the Dolby Atmos renderer. Now, if you happen to have closed it by mistake, you can reopen it again by going over to this main channel over here, and then just clicking on Dolby Atmos there and that reopens that window which I'm going to leave open for most of this tutorial. We'll explain it a little bit later. Now the next thing that you'll notice if you look at each channel your regular panning controls have disappeared and they've been replaced by this panning control as we can see here. Now I'm going to be listening to just the guitar for the moment so I'm just going to select that. I'm going to solo that I should say and then we'll start to play around with these panning controls. Now the first one here which you can drag around control two axis, the left and right axis and the front and rear axis, okay? And you can just drag your, or the guitar in this place around to those positions in those two dimensions. If we drag the little dot closer towards the center, we're changing something called the size. And even with stereo headphones on, you're gonna hear the difference in that in just a moment when we listen to it, okay? The other thing that we can adjust with Atmos is the height or the elevation, okay? And for that, we use this control here to make things higher, we move it up to make them lower, we move it down. Now, these are the controls available on the channel. They are a sort of a little bit fiddly when you're just starting out. So if you wanna use this in a little bit more detail, just double click on this control and it opens up the surround panel, which we can see here. I'm just gonna drag that off to the side so we can see it at the same time as the Atmos renderer. So the same things again, we can move things around left to right um, and also towards the rear left and right. And, and also as we move this sort of arrow in towards the center, we are changing the size. At the bottom of this interface, we can also drag up and down to change the elevation. If you notice that there's a sort of a dome shape here and as we move things up, they tend to move more towards the center as well. You can see that in the top view there. And I guess that's reflecting the fact that when things are really high above you in real life, um, you no longer hear them so much in terms of the left, right, um, front, rear dimensions, okay? You just hear them mainly above, okay? More towards the center. So that is reflected there. So let's just have a listen to this guitar for a moment. I'm just going to move things around so you can hear uh, the changes. Let's change the size. Height.
Now, when you're using just stereo headphones, you don't get much of a sense of the height at all. I can hear a little bit of um, a difference, you know, between the front and the rear. I'm not quite sure how that's happening. Let me know in the comments down below if you experienced that as well. Now, I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to play around with these controls, but this time I want you to focus more on what's happening over in this window, the Atmos renderer. There's a few things that we're going to see happening. We're going to see metering on the left and on the right, yeah, for... Uh, what are called the beds here and also for the output we're going to see the same beds are essentially relating to the channels which are set up um, on whatever system people are listening to okay so we're going to send things to the left right channel the center speaker the rear ones etc so you'll see those meters here reflecting how much is being sent to each of these channels which would as i say relate to a speaker in real life so let's listen to that guitar again and take a look at the changes in the metering And as you could see there, there's, you know, metering for those beds reflected on the left and right hand side of this little interface here. Okay, so that's uh, the first method of panning. So let's take a look at spatial object panning. Now, if we take a look at my guitar channel again here and we look at the panning area that we were looking at earlier, you'll notice there's a little down arrow just off to the side. Click on that and then you can select spatial object panner there to change our method. So I've clicked on that. There's a small change here in the um, it's now got this sort of square shape to it but essentially these two small controls uh, behave in just the same way as they did earlier but what has also happened is this interface has opened the object panner again I'm just going to drag it off to the side so that we can see it and the Atmos render at the same time now this is a very similar interface as the one we looked at earlier we can move things around on the left right front rear axis on the top view here and then we we can move things up and down like so um, for the height or elevation axis and if we want to change the size of uh, the object we can just go down to this size control here and then just drag up and down to change that okay so that's essentially very very similar now you'll notice over here um, with the uh, Atmos renderer that we have now this object which has appeared which is the guitar okay and we can also see that reflected um, in this 3d space over here and you'll see that blue dot for the guitar move around in that 3d space Space as I move the guitar around. What I'm going to quickly do is go over to some other channels. Let's go to let's, um, unsolo the guitar and I'm going to select this bass and change change that to a spatial object panner. The same for this piano, same for this uh, organ and the same for some vocals here. Okay, and I'll just move forward to a position in the song where they're all played. Now as I select each channel, so the bass here, you can see that the object panner, which I'm leaving open, uh, now is panning for the bass so I'll just move that well let's keep the bass in the center yeah um, the guitar will just move keep off to the side there the piano um, I'll just move that around now you'll notice with the piano that it's slightly different because this is a stereo instrument it originally had left and right channels so you can see those left and right channels being uh, represented there as I move the object around we can also drag those to uh, change the spread okay of the left and right channels for that particular object so again I'll just move the piano over there perhaps move it up in height a little bit something like that then I've got the organ for fun I'll just drag that around and behind and then the vocal I guess I should probably keep that pretty much in the center I'll just move it up a little bit for fun um, now I'm just going to play all of those we'll have a very quick listen and I don't mean to move the vocal go bust your ball But that's the trouble. 
Now, one of the things that you can notice with this is that I can actually see all those things in this 3D space and I can actually drag this around to get a better idea from different views as to where each of those objects are now positioned in that 3D space, okay? Now, if you wanna look at some default views, the original view is up here from behind. So if we can just click on that, that's what they call that, the front view, okay? We've got the left view, the right view, and also uh, the height or the above view there, okay? So I, I look rather like the free roaming view that we can see here. And again, with the metering, we can see um, each of the objects metering happening here, but we can also see how that's reflected in the beds, the outputs as we play things, yeah? <laughs> So that's the basic two methods of panning. Let's have a look at how we deal with automation. The easiest way to automate these positions is either using the surround panner views or the object panner view. So I've got the object panner view open for the guitar here. So I'm gonna go up to the top left where it says auto off at the moment, click on that and then select right. Okay, now I'm simply just gonna play my track and then move that guitar around let's do that and I don't mean to go bust your bubble. okay that's fine so again I'll go up to the top left uh, click where it says right and then just change that to read okay and now when I play you'll see that moving around without my intervention I don't mean to. So once you're happy with your mix, you'll want to export it. To do that, go to the song menu at the top, click on that, and then go down to export spatial audio. When you click on that, this dialog box opens. You can select your file location here. You can set up a file name. You can set up the range. I like to use, you know, the, the start and end markers for my range. You can set that as you wish. And also at the bottom left here, you can set up any additional mixes you want to output as well. You may want to just uh, export a stereo mix, for example, as well. But I'll have both those switched off. And once you're happy with your settings, you just click on OK and it exports your Atmos mix. Now as well as Studio One 6.5 being released today with Atmos, I'm also launching the Studio One Revealed Facebook group. I would love for you to follow the link in the description down below and join me over there. It's a place where we can build this community, get to know each other, help each other out and have a little fun along the way. I'd especially like to see any new over there. I want this to be a super welcoming place where there are no stupid questions. As I say, follow the link in the description down below if you're a Facebook user for that. I'm Mike and I hope you are well. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you in the next video.